Well, to have a closer look at what's in this white paper, what it means for our military outlook, I'm now joined by Adam Lockyer from the US Studies Centre. Uh, welcome. Uh, what do you make overall of what you've seen so far in the white paper? It's a fairly conservative document, uh, particularly compared to the 2009 white paper, which was far more ambitious, uh, both in terms of scope and also in military spending. So this is a scaling back from 2009 and just sort of facing up to some of the uh, fiscal um, realities. Re realities. The, the, the 2009 white paper, we should remind people, I think it had something like a $200 billion wish list of acquisitions. That's right, plus the 3% um, real growth in defence across mm. the later part of this decade. And that never uh, happened. That's never <laughs> happened and it's not going to happen. And so this is sort of pulling back from all of that, but it's also pulling back from a lot of the ambitious language as well about um, Australia's position in the region as though we're going to take a far more assertive role um, in the region. This is because really Kevin Rudd used to talk a lot about Australia being a middle power uh, and look to an extent we're now on the US uh, on the UN uh, Security Council mm -hmm. you know we, we've, we're still on the G20 of course mm -hmm. uh, we are playing a bigger role mm -hmm. but we're not going to be in the realm of some of the players in this region. Yeah exactly and this is this white paper's positioning Australia as being far more part of the Asian architecture, so be, being far more multilateral in its approach to its defence and security and foreign policy in the region, mm -hmm. rather than being this grand uh, middle power that's going to walk around the region mm -hmm. and be able to make people fall into line. It does stress once again, though, Australia's desire to see stronger regional architecture. And mm -hmm. um, as, as, as you know, Australia really wants to see a mechanism for sorting out uh, some of the territorial disputes that China's been involved in over the last uh, few years. Mm -hmm. that, that's a continued aim here and something Australia will keep pushing. Yeah, and it's sort of a fallback to old, an old Labor policy of um, being far more engaged with the region, um, acting far more cooperatively with the region, um, and that, that sort of language that we got used to during um, Hawke and the Keating years. Specifically on, uh, well, a couple of the specifics, um, in terms of our air defences, mm -hmm. the 12 new growlers that are mm -hmm. going to be purchased, we won't get the joint strike fighters mm -hmm. until uh, 2020, uh, mm -hmm. the earliest it seems. Is that a good call? Uh, well, they've been, their, their hand has been forced here. So mm -hmm. because there's been delays and there's been cost blowouts with the F-35 joint strike fighter, they've had no choice but to, f to have this stop gap measure. Mm -hmm. This was never the ideal. So when the Howard government um, decided to purchase the uh, F-35, it was envisaged that it was going to be a one plane fleet. So we're going to have 100 of these aircraft and they were going to be able to do everything. Because of these continued delays and the, the retirement, the necessary retirement of the first the F-111 and now the, the old F-18s, we've needed a stopgap measure. And so it's not ideal. We're going to now be having three different airframes. Three different types. So the Super Hornet plus these, these Growlers plus the F-35, if and when they eventually arrive. And overall, does it give us the capacity to do what is the main aim, protect Australia? Yeah, so um, the Super Hornets are more or less a jack of all trades. They can right. do some um, of the strike capabilities, but they're mostly a fighter. And so uh, with the F-111, they were a specialised bomber. They could get in and get out. Whereas what the growlers are supposed to do is put up an electronic net. So they'll go in first, they'll um, black out all the enemy's radar, then the Super Hornets can go in, drop their bombs and get back out again. So it's really just saying that these the Super Hornets can't do the job off the F-111. On the submarines, it's no great surprise, is it, that they're not going to buy off the shelf, they're going to build them here? Mm -hmm. uh, so there was so much problem with the Collins to begin with, but much of that has been worked out now. So it's probably a good idea that we sort of stick with something that all the bugs have been more or less worked out. Um, the biggest problem with it now with our submarine fleet isn't the machines themselves, it's crewing them. Uh, because the same skills that you need to run a submarine are also in demand in the mines. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of sailors are doing one or two um, rotations. rotations and then getting out and going to the mines and catching the bucks. Exactly, yeah. and they're taking those skills with them. And yeah. so um, with the upgrading to the 12 submarines, one of the biggest challenges won't be building them, it'll be crewing them. That's a really interesting point. Um, and, and just finally on uh, the lack of detail or the detail that's in there, mm -hmm. um, Looking at past white papers, do, do we normally get a bit more detail about the dollars, the, the spending? No, that's politics. So no. what the Liberal Party is just doing there is saying that, um, saying that we don't have any detail either. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to give out the detail, so mm -hmm. we're going to 
getting first, really. They're, they're striking first, saying that Labor's not supplying the detail, so therefore we don't need to supply the mm. detail. Is there um, much difference between them, do you think, in terms of their defence plans? Uh, not very much, no. Um, so th with the scaling back from Afghanistan and Iraq, um, they, they, both sides are now talking more about uh, Defence of Australia, sort of the old language, um, and a return to the old language. And they've both got this ambition to spend 2% uh, GDP mm. on defence eventually, but neither of them have plans to make that happen. So this is, this, this is just politics. Adam Lockyer, great to talk to you. Thanks for that analysis. Appreciate it. Thank you, David.